Well, hello everyone and welcome to another very quick, complete growing guide here on the MI Gardener channel. I promise you this one's going to be quick because the plant we're talking about is goji berries. Goji berries are a very easy plant to grow. They originate from China, so uh, they are a very cold tolerant plant. They in fact will be cold tolerant up until zone two. So if you're in zone two or lower, they're going to do great. They also have a plant called the wolfberry. Now these are goji berries and they're, they're in the same family. So this will apply to both goji berries and wolf berries, uh, which most people can't even really tell the difference. Wolf berries basically will grow in uh, warmer temperatures than the goji berries will. So either way, it doesn't matter. Um, I've had both wolf berries and goji berries grow here in Michigan, grow just fine over winter in some of the coldest winters. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. Let's put it that way. Now the first thing that we want to talk about here is the soil type. The soil type that we have is a very loose, organic rich soil. We have it in these fire rings here that are about 24 inches, uh, maybe 26 inches tall. And that's going to have a lot of soil for them to do, uh, to, to kind of do their thing in. Because of the fact that they are perennials, we want to make sure that they have lots of soil. So in the bottom of these fire rings, we did not put any of the weed fabric that a lot of people typically will put in. And that's because we want to give them the best chance at putting their roots way down deep, even past the, the fire rings. So that way, that if they want to go further, they can go further. Now, again, uh, the, the soil type is very crucial because of the fact that um, they are a perennial. So they need to send down those roots and they need to be able to put the roots out so that they can get established for getting prepared for winter. The next thing is proper nutrients. We give them a well-balanced fertilizer, not specific in anything in the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium category. Basically, what we give them is what we give everything else, Trifecta Plus. And that's because it's a very all-purpose fertilizer where the plant is going to take up what it needs and the rest is going to be left in the soil. So the reason why we do that is because it is a perennial. And as we talk about with all of our other perennials, we don't want to feed them too much of anything because we want to keep them well-balanced throughout the season so that they can grow uh, grow well for you and, and prepare for winter. So that's that. Now, when it comes to watering, they're very drought tolerant. Because these actually will grow in certain deserts even, they are not something that you need to worry super, you don't need, you don't need to worry a lot about it because of the fact that it, it will send down those deep roots to tap into those water stores deep down where you don't even really think water is left. And uh, I guarantee you there's water there. Now the next thing is with watering, we do, I mean, it will grow better if you give it water, but we give it water uh, whenever we water everything else here. So it gets a pretty regular watering. And, uh, and so that does help, but again, it's not, it's not necessary. Now the, the most crucial thing is sunlight. They need lots and lots and lots of sun. Goji berries require a minimum of six hours to fruit. They are in the nightshade family, so they're very similar to kind of the, the flower or the, the sunlight requirements for tomatoes and stuff like that. So you want to make sure that you give them lots, and I mean lots of sun. You can never give them too much. These beds here get about 10 hours of sun during peak season, between 10 and 11 hours, which is a lot of sun in uh you know, in gardening terms, but six hours, you're going to do great. Any less than that, you're going to struggle to put out a lot of fruit production. They might produce some, but not so much. The next thing I want to talk about is pH. pH is very, very, very important with growing goji berries. They like a slightly acidic environment. So what we've done is we've applied uh, Trifecta Plus, which is a slightly acidic fertilizer since most garden plants uh, like that. But then to ensure that we have the acidity, we also put in some sphagnum peat moss, which is going to keep that acidity around where some type of, uh, you know, acid uh, additive, whether it's sulfur or whatever, will, it'll deplete over time. So we've actually changed the, the pH of the beds permanently um, or near permanently by adding the sphagnum peat moss, which is a very good uh, pH buffer to, uh, to bring the pH more uh, in the more acidic range. Now, uh, the very last thing that I want to talk about is when it comes to uh, pruning. A lot of people, they want to prune their goji berries, and I cannot stress that that is optional, but it will inhibit major fruit production. The, f the reason why is because goji berries don't have a specific place where they fruit, believe it or not. Goji berries will produce flowers all along the stem and they will produce on all new growth. 
So if you if you come through here and prune, and I know, I know, trust me, they get floppy. So what you can do is take a tomato cage, stick a tomato cage and stick it up. For me, it doesn't really matter, but they do get really floppy and really tall. But because of that, because that nice tall floppiness, we're gonna get lots of fruit on it. So they're very good for you. And in fact, goji berries are some of the most nutrient rich plants or nutrient rich fruits on the earth. They're actually considered a superfood because of the fact they're so high in antioxidants and they are actually a complete protein, which for those of you who are vegan and vegetarian that are always concerned about, you know, where's the protein coming from um, and having that complete, uh, that complete protein base, uh, you're going to get that from the goji berries, believe it or not. So uh, super awesome in that respect. And, uh, and that's goji berries. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And as always, I recommend checking out uh, the goji berries here. We got these at Lowe's, um, which I was really surprised by, but I know you can get them online. You can actually start them from seed. Uh, there's um, a couple of videos out there that I've seen on starting them from seed. Uh, in fact, we started them from seed, but I'm not sure where that video's at. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can go to the health food store and find raw goji berries. You can even order them online, pick out the seeds, put them in some soil and they'll sprout in, uh, in no time at all. So I recommend it. It's a great plant to grow, very easy to grow. And uh, it's one that again, I will end on. It's so expensive. We're talking like 18 to $30 a pound for this stuff. I mean, this is not gold, but it's like almost the price of gold for heaven's sake. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I exaggerated a little bit here, but um, but no, it, it's very expensive, and so um, and that's dried too. Uh, you know, it's it's super expensive when it's when it's uh, actually ripe. You're talking anywhere between forty and fifty dollars a pound for for the ripe berries. So uh, yeah, that's all I got for you today. Grow it, save some money, save your uh, save your health, and I'll talk to you later. This is Luke from the My Gardener channel. Hoping you all are growing bigger going home. See ya. Bye.